Howdy, this is Yarl Stewart with Dog Spirit again. And now I'm here today to show you guys a little bit of a reenactor hack as well as a camping hack and everything like that. When I was in the Boy Scouts, I learned how to do this. And this is to create the ultimate fire starters. Um, I grew up in uh, Washington State and did Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, all that there. And that's where I did JROTC and I did most of my military career was in Washington State. And in Washington State, if you go camping and you don't know how to light a fire on water, you're doomed to fail. Because all of it is hills, everything like that. You have mountainous terrains where overnight it can snow and leave you in a couple feet of snow. Everything like that. We did snow camping, skiing, everything like that. And it just, you know... There's just a lot of liquid over in Washington State, especially the west side where I spent the majority of my time. On top of that, most of the wood around there is evergreen and it liked to stay green, hard to light on fire, everything like that. So we had to come up with a lot of tricks to, you know, start fires, including packing in our own, you know, fire starters, quickie logs, everything like that. And basically, we had to come up with a way to, you know, make fires go. Well, one of our scoutmasters actually showed us this trick where you take some of the most flammable but slow burning things that you can find and you make these little globs out of the stuff. Now, one thing he taught us was to basically take uh, one of the paper egg cartons, as you can see I have some right here, and you basically add candle wax, sticks, dryer lint, all sorts of stuff, and stuff that you would normally use um, to start a fire in that sense. And basically you take the candle and you light it and you pour the wax all over and everything like that. And the way he showed us was to use tea lights and he you know, would light the tea lights, get them all nice and wet, and then we'd just take those tea lights and dump them in the different stages of us putting sticks and paper and everything like that in it. Well, being a Viking Age reenactor, uh, I decided to kind of take the same concept and make it out of Viking Age materials. Because when I think of the weather and everything like that that I've researched about the Viking Age and, and Scandinavia is that it's not a whole lot different in the severity of the climate of Washington State except for it's probably colder but moisture is probably still a big problem so I figured you know what can I do okay well sticks sticks are Viking Age period um, candle wax not so much but we have tallow which is basically you save your you know red meat rendering fats and you boil it down into a nice white stuff i have some stuff that's a couple stage of boiling stages away that i could use but unfortunately when i tried to do it earlier with white wax i realized that it's you know off gray with white wax with a white string with white with a tan linen so it wasn't very good to view so what I did was something that you know you can do as a Viking Age reenactor if you're not wanting to be super authentic with this recipe is you can take all the little candles that get burnt and half used and everything like that and they leave that little tiny bit on this big ass jar and you can't really light them anymore and it's just not worth keeping around well keep them around because you can take these and you basically take a tiny little pot right here just a nice little pot fill it with a little bit of water and then you turn the heat up to half heat throw a ceramic plate on top of it and basically Within 10 minutes, you got yourself a bunch of candle wax. And you can keep doing that until you basically make a big old jar of the stuff. You can do it with little tea lights. You can do it, hell, with, you know. You got these little scented burning waxes that you can 
cake and put it in there once the scented scent is gone from the wax from your little thing you just start saving it in a jar and you've got yourself some you know pretty decent amount of wax and realistically when you're out doing the reenactment and everything like that fire can be the difference between you and your group having a good time and you and your people basically packing up your stuff and getting in your car and leaving you know or getting really sick or anything like that so a quick fire is a nice thing to be able to have and basically um so for to show you kind of some steps and some theories and processes that that work really well for the viking recipe i decided instead of using tallow i'm going to use uh this mixture of waxes which turned out to be a nice dark red so you'll be able to see some stuff all right so what I start with is I take a strip of linen, you know, those messy strips of linen that you get from making your tunics and everything like that. They work perfect. You just cut them to size so that they're basically just wider than this. And then you slowly poke it down into each one. You keep it in one big long strip. It stays nicely, everything like that. Then what you do is you take a little bit of wax and put it in the bottom. What I like to use is these little syringes that the doctor's office and the uh, CVS and everything like that and the pharmacists all give you for kids medicine because half of one of these things gives you a nice little dot at the bottom and I do that and let it dry so that it's nice and hard then what I do is I can take a string if I want to fuse put it down on that and drop just a little bit more on there not much you could probably get away with doing it like five or six times with one little syringe. These are little five, uh, three milliliter syringes. And then you get the thing stuck in there. Now, the next step, I kind of prepped a few steps ahead just so that we had some goodness, is that I took wood shavings and put it in. Just a nice little glue of it bring it up to the small arch on these things of wood shavings and maybe some wool mixed in, but not too much. You want this to be a solid, more solid layer. So you got wood shavings and sticks in here. And then you pour a nice line. You basically get it probably half full of wax or tallow. Tallow for the, you know, Viking recipe. Then what you do here is you put a layer of little tiny snips of linen, okay? That's what I did for this because I just, I had just gotten rid of my bag of runoff lines. And what I mean by runoff lines is when you're cutting and tearing linen to make your clothes and everything like that, you know, you get those little stragglies and tangles and everything like that. You just rip those off, stuff them in a bag, and you can use those for a more period use than just cutting up linen because linen was, you know, pretty valuable comparative to just these little ugly things from that you get from dyeing, from washing, from everything like that. Now you take those, you put those on top of the wood and the sticks. Then you want to get yourself some more sticks, put it on top of there. And then you pour more wax or tallow on it, put some more sticks, and basically you just wind up with this big old glob. And then, in theory, if you're doing this, you're gonna wind up with the ability to pull this linen off and then have nice little globs covered in linen. And basically, you strike a spark or a flame or anything like that onto this stuff, it'll light and it will go up like nobody's business. These things are absolutely great. They light on fire. They get the nice core temperature of the fire super hot. On top of that, with all the sticks and everything in there, it gets a nice little layer of char that just can't be denied and basically as soon as you light this thing and everything like that you start to see that wax melt you start putting sticks on it like it's nobody's business because that fire is just going to go up real fast 
And basically, when you're making these, you want to make them in big batches because it takes time. I've been doing this for about an hour and a half before this point, and I'm still nowhere near done on any of this. But I'm going to finish these up and, you know, save them for, you know, multiple events. This, you know, if you're good about your fire, you only need one. On top, and basically you take yourself a little plastic baggie, you put a couple of these in that plastic baggie, you take a second plastic bag, you put a couple in there because, you know, double up on your double up. And you're sure to have something dry for, let's say you are you fall asleep early and nobody tends the fire and it goes out or it rains and the fire goes out, you know, and everything like that. You can at least start something back up and get that fire going as quickly as possible. Um, another way that you, another thing that you can do with these is that if you are not doing reenactment, you don't need the linen. So you just pour that crap in there and just start stacking it up. And basically what you want to wind up with is a giant hunk of waxy, tallowy gunk. The reason why I wanted to do the linen is because with it being on this non-period substance, there is the problem of it not being period <clears throat> and the linen will actually come up off that papery uh, egg carton. Um, basically, this is a way of getting, you know, basically just your remnants of all your crafts and making something incredibly useful for it. Um, we got a member who does, you know, wool spinning and everything like that and he keeps his little boogers when you know you're picking through and you're making these nice little things to spin wool with but you got your little boogers in there of stuff that you just don't want to mess with and everything like that you keep that you stick those on top of the things and they just go up like hair because that's what basically what it is so another thing you want to do uh, since I'm already set up here I'm gonna show you another thing is that you can actually make tallow cubes, just the same as this. What you do is you get yourself a nice little ice tray or you get yourself little containers. You spray them with Pam and then you can put the stuff in there and basically once it dries and sets, come right out. So there are multiple different things that you can do with this and the main reason why I encourage this is because one, you're getting something for nothing. And on top of that, you're learning a little bit about the history and everything like that. You're kind of learning to combat the elements and everything like that, because all this stuff is super flammable and you can pretty much pra practically wind up with it for free. Because if you're like my wife, or if you have a wife like my wife or a husband like my wife, you wind up with dozens of these useless candles that still and everything like that and basically you just made yourself 10 20 minutes less fighting with a normal fire and you know basically you wound up with a fire where no fire can be lit as for that you know you don't want to spend too much money on this you just get the free stuff it's pretty easy it's just grass dried grass um leaves, sticks, wax, linen pieces, whatever you can find that's just your random leftover crafting stuff that you would normally use for tinder and you seal it together with tallow and wax. Well anyway, I'm gonna get back to this. Y'all have a good night. Don't forget to like this video if you learned something. Like it if you, you know, do this yourself. Like it if you you know, just appreciate the fact that, you know, somebody's out here trying to make things a little bit better for everybody. And please subscribe to my channel if you want to have more videos like this and want to hear more from us. Have a good night.